our luxury accommodation for the night. <laughs> About a thousand people here. What, already? Yeah, it's right. they've been a queuing since Thursday. They've been camping outside since Thursday. Oh, no, as you, as you walk down, you'll see. Well, well, well. Who on earth could have predicted this? It's 3 a.m. Last year, there were 400 people in the queue by 6 a.m. People have been camping out since Thursday. It's Sunday. <laughs> we're remaining hopeful because the run of play is better on day two because there's all the British players, there's Djokovic, Nadal, but we're here to see Federer. <laughs> and I have a funny feeling that everyone else is too. Losing myself tonight, leaving the day behind. I'm up, but I don't mind. It's alright. Working at nine to five. I've only got one life, so I hate to waste any time. I'm all about the good vibes. Good morning, everybody. Oh. Welcome to Wimbledon 2018. Hello. Hello. The queue is now officially open. Zulu Zulu, she's steward. Uh, the queue for 2018 championship is now open. The honest stewards and day stewards are all on duty. She's very enthusiastic and ready to go. And we'll be moving people down to pay lines and we should give you some figures uh, in about half an hour's time over. <laughs> so it's been about eight hours now and it is boiling outside as you can see crystal clear blue skies which is very rare for the UK but we are making the most of it um, by sitting in the shade <laughs> we are actually in the queue for the queue so uh, yes that's actually a thing so how it works with Wimbledon is if you have to come down well apparently days before not just like the day before you have to come down days before then you join the queue for the queue which is what we've spent the last eight hours doing and we're about I'd say another hour away from moving into the actual queue which is this all the way along here so we are here to attempt to get center court tickets there's 500 center court tickets available in this queue but we are number 583, something like that, so an, eight, an 84. And so we kind of have to hope that there's around about 90 people in front of us in all of this that doesn't want a centre court ticket, which is a possibility. It's very unlikely, but it is a possibility. So we're remaining hopeful and, you know, as positive as we can. <laughs> Dad is, oh God, this is weird. Dad's got sunburn on the front of his legs. He fell asleep in the sun. <laughs> Made it in, caught one ticket, so the plan is to have a wander around, get our bearings, watch Federer on the mound. I don't, I don't even know. <laughs> I can put 
pull anything off me. We're attempting to gather shade under the uh, and we're very proud of the fact that um, we've completely moderately priced umbrella. We took a little trip to the shop, as you guys have already seen, and we've actually already seen Federer because he was on court. My bag's on the trip. Um, but I think the other thing that we're very um, brilliant keen to celebrate that knowledge this year is, is a fifth Sorry, guys. <laughs> Awkward. So, as I was saying earlier, the plan is we're going to sit on here until around about two by the time Federer absolutely smashes. Whoever he's playing. After that, we're going to have a little wander around, right? Probably going to have a Pims or 12 in between. And then go and see Serena Williams, which should be interesting because I've never actually seen her in person. Honestly, do not know how people do it. How people sit in the sun. Like, look at this. Watching the Roger Federer match, people simply sitting in the sun. No umbrella, no towel, no sun cream, nothing. Just sat there with the pims. Like, loving life, in all fairness to them. But I have absolutely no fucking clue how they do it. I sit in it for five minutes and my legs burn, my shoulders burn, my nose burns, everything. I can't do anything about it. But these people just sit there for hours and hours and hours on end and I have no idea how they do it. Let me provide a little bit of context to this trip as a whole, right? So I used to be a pretty decent tennis player. I used to play a lot as a kid, like go all around the country and play for, you know, Leicestershire and my local club and all that kind of stuff. My biggest sort of hero at the time was Roger Federer. And for my 21st birthday, my mum and dad kind of came together and thought, what can we get Liam that he'd really like? Um, and they thought, well, let's take him to Wimbledon. And so me and my dad came and camped down um, with an attempt to, uh, I say an attempt because we never actually managed to do it, we just watched it on the hill instead, but with an attempt to see Roger Federer. Who would have known, absolutely no one on this planet, not even the people who work at Wimbledon, would have predicted that, nobody could have predicted this, that you get there at 2.30 in the morning and there's already 600 people in the queue. Like we were 597th and 598th in the queue. That's without the people that didn't get kicked out, without the people that kind of broke the rules of it. We were still, you know, 600th at three in the morning. The year before, there was 200 at four in the morning. So we thought we'd be good, but like I say, nobody could have predicted this, but we've had a great day. Federer smashed it and that's about it. We've got Serena Williams later. We had a right good setup on the hill. I'll put a picture right here. See if you guys can find me and the old man sat on the hill. Three, two, one. If you haven't found us by now, you don't know me well enough and keep watching the channel. We are sat down before the Serena Williams game. We have two ice cream sundaes. I got it with marshmallows and strawberry. They had no meringue and a little bit of raspberry sauce on top as well. Dad got strawberries and what? Fudge. Fudge, yeah. Fudge. Um, and like, for one, it's zero calorie, and for two, it cost hardly anything. Well, oh, hang on, 
You know, you've got a pom pom in your head. Or do you not want to be in it? <laughs> <laughs> There we go, there we go, we'll go with there. Stop it! What a day! One thing about Wimbledon that you guys will know about, if you've ever been to Body Power, you're watching this, a lot of you guys follow me from Body Power. The com it's a completely different, I mean obviously, it's, this is tennis compared to, body, to, compared to bodybuilding, but the clientele is just completely different. The way people dress, the way people talk, the th well, the things people talk about, even the food they eat is completely different. What else? Close the word. You said close the word, didn't I? Oh, did you? I wouldn't listen. Oh, <laughs> it's so much different, and especially in the queue. I mean, we're not kind of your typical tennis obsessors, if you like. We just like tennis, and that's that, really. Whereas these people in the queue are reeling off statistic after statistic and looking at you like you're an absolute alien for not knowing what the hell is going on. How was it? What a day. Hot. Yeah. Do you, well, do you want to use the loop before we go? Yeah. Okay. Was it good? So, yeah, really good. Really, really, really good. Watch. I heard the shouting and stuff. Yeah. It was, it, though. Yeah, yeah, it was actually. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it was. You know, we've had a really good day. Good. And uh, hope we've not been in trouble for no, you. Yeah, absolutely or fine. No, pleasure to have you. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Pleasure. All right. Enjoy it. Cheers. Okay. Cheers. Well, that wasn't expected. The last game before we actually left, um, we nearly actually left. We nearly didn't go and see it because we went to see Serena Williams and she smashed it. That wasn't really a surprise, was it? No. She, she kind of walked it. And this person in the last game was supposed to walk it. And there was a new person that was only 20 years old that won the entire crowd over. All 12 of us. Nobody knew who this girl was, but she somehow won the entire crowd over by being the underdog. You know how that works. Everybody loves an underdog, especially, well, us. And so that was... Pro well, I would go out, I'll go out of my way and say that that was the best game of Wimbledon day one. It was literally her first game as well and she's playing against someone who'd been in the final before and everything like that. Great day! The good vibes. And that is it everyone. My Wimbledon experience 2018. Just wanted to say a quick thank you if you're watching and a massive thank you to the old man. He has gone to a big, big effort to organise everything, even down to where we're going to park the car on somebody's drive. Like, I never would have thought of that and you know it. It was a shame that we didn't get to see Roger Federer, but hey, we never stood a chance because we got beaten out by a load of die-hard Roger Federer fans. Like, I love Roger Federer. But we're talking, we got beaten out by people wearing Roger Federer earrings, for God's sake. Like, we literally, little did we know, we never really stood a chance. But anyway, so thank you guys so much for watching. And again, thank you so much to the old man. I know you're watching this. Mwah. Love you. Thank you so much for another amazing weekend. And uh, yeah, I'm glad I got to record it all and we can look back at this video and stuff. So thank you guys all so, so much for watching. Please drop a like and a comment down below if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you are new to the channel for loads more content over the summer. I'm excited to bring you guys so much content. So be sure to subscribe if you are looking forward to that. Once more, thank you so much for watching, guys. This has been my Wimbledon and the old man's Wimbledon experience 2018. I'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs>